Sir Roger Douglas. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Finance. Does the government ask when considering policy options whether the policy will improve New Zealand's economic growth prospects or make them worse? If not, why not? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, yes, overall that is a very important consideration, although I'd have to say it is not the only factor that the government considers. The Honourable Sir Roger Douglas. Mr Speaker, in light of the fact that between 2008 and 2011, extra government spending consumed 98 per cent of New Zealand's uh, $16 billion increase in nominal GDP, what factors led the Minister to undertake this increase in spending, and did he believe that that spending would improve economic prospects? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, in the first place, uh, the, that is a trend the Government will certainly, is certainly planning to turn around, and that process began in Budget 2011 and will continue. Government is, government is too big too big a proportion of the economy. Uh, the increase in government spending was consistent with the government's policy objectives, which were to protect the most vulnerable through the recession, uh, to continue to invest in frontline services and to embark on a very significant uh, infrastructure investment program. The Hon. Heather Roy. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How can businesses expect to survive when government swallows up just about all of any increased government, uh, growth that takes place in the economy. The Honourable Bill English. Uh, well, Mr Speaker, in the uh, situation of a fairly significant global downturn and also a New Zealand economy that have been distorted by uh, rampant housing inflation and huge increases in government spending, uh, that's what actually happened. Uh, but the government has set out its plans to reverse that trend because it is important in this economy that people and resources move to the tradable sector where we can earn higher incomes by selling products to the rest of the world and out of the non-tradable sector which has been characterised over the last 10 years by uh, excessive debt and very low productivity. The Honourable Heather Thank Roy. Thank you Mr Speaker. What advice did the government seek and receive on the impact on economic growth and on small businesses when it refused to reinstate youth rates locking young people out of work and preventing businesses from hiring extra staff. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, over the last few years, Mr Speaker, that advice has been, uh, I think, similar to the consensus that developed um, in the last 10 years that uh, higher pay rates for young people would not affect their employment prospects. Uh, it's probably become a bit more apparent in the last couple of years that that advice uh, maybe wasn't realistic. Question number five, Rahui Katanei. Uh, 